Good morning, folks. We've got earthquakes, weather, the science news stays a bit closer to home than usual today with an eye on the sun. And let's go over to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star still without eruptions. The coronal holes continue their rotation. The bright active region on the south still has no sunspots, but it does have something. Looking into the core of that brighter area, we see this thin, dark plasma filament. When those feed an active region that actually has sunspots, they provide extra current for plasma instabilities, triggering solar flares. Plus, the plasma itself feeds a more dense CME. We've got the opposite of CMEs this morning in the solar wind. Completely quiet, stabilized stream, leaving geomagnetic conditions also very quiet. Zeros and ones on the board. 6.3, big blood echo a couple hours ago near Kamchatka, Russia. It followed a 6.3 that struck closer to the surface off the coast of Mexico, which also shook El Salvador and Guatemala, another big one in Argentina, too. The tropical system to the northeast in the Atlantic isn't going anywhere scary, very thankful about that one. Complementing the colder records that are falling in the USA, we see Switzerland with record November snowfall here, 10 days left in the month. And the top weather event of the last day was in the UAE, where a dust storm rolled in on the edge of high winds, basically shutting down the region. Some of the footage is as intense as we've seen from their dust storms, but we also saw their disfavorable science turn a considerable amount of the situation into precipitation. The UAE is one of the latest countries to employ cloud seeding, this is different from the oxidized metal spray in the stratosphere. Instead, this is salting the cloud level to condense vapor and bring down the rain. Again, it's disfavorable because we shouldn't be playing God in the sky. It's Space Weather Week at the ESA, and they are talking about the potential damage from those solar eruptions we mentioned earlier. Folks, if you joined us after the last solar maximum, and especially if you joined us after the September 2017 solar flares, You've pretty much just seen the sun acting very quiet, not much about which to get excited. But she is a sleeping monster, fully capable of destroying our way of life and sending us back to the Middle Ages. They are planning a new L5 satellite to permanently have its eye on the incoming limb and a profile view of CMEs coming at Earth. A link to their story has the video, explanations, and some cool infographics. During one of the solar storms of the last maximum, data was collected that has now been turned into usable science. The magnetosphere of Earth is our protective bubble against the solar wind, solar flares, cosmic rays, etc. And while normal, quiet solar wind streams might look like this hitting the magnetosphere foreshock, when more intensified streams hit the Earth, the resonance of the field sends magnetic waves back out not wholly unlike the oxygen emission that meets a CME. At the link, you can listen to those sounds as well. Up next, we're looking at the NIST's latest thousand eye photon detector. They are hoping it will help them with dark matter and ETs, the first of which is a lost cause because dark matter is not real, but the second of which is something I do expect in my lifetime. At very least, the chemical signature of life being detected on an exoplanet, if not one of the moons of Jupiter or Saturn. Speaking of the solar system, this is a dusty place with trillions upon trillions of tiny pieces of comet and asteroid. The LISA Pathfinder mission has collected and studied a number of these as micrometeoroids pepper the spacecraft in its orbit. In fact, that's one of the key items of its science suite. And in the orbit tracer we have here, they are showing all the points where it met contact with one of those little specks of the solar system. Folks, new evidence of a tsunami in Oman has been unearthed one that struck the coastline with 50-foot waves a thousand years ago. They are saying that nature's potential is not something the northwestern Indian Ocean is ready for, and with such installation of an early warning system, it could likely give no more than a 30-minute alert, and that's the luckiest best-case scenario. Up next, nature is getting in on the Google Health data scandal. No new facts here, just a recognition of the issue, plus some whining from scientists who think it will hurt the trust in their research. How ironic. What hurts the trust in the research is bad research. The top story today is a solid work showing how the soon-to-be-replaced CMIP5 climate models are failing to reproduce the Eurasian cold swings. This sort of failure is one of the key fixable items with the next solar particle forcing datasets that have been allowed for the next run. 
CEM IP6. While not required until 2022, those new models are now in play as the UN has bent to 40 years of solar physicist pleas from NASA and the top universities. Now, while a small contingent of climate contrarians worries not for the pollution of the Earth, the intelligible and correct opposition to the mainstream climate story couples a want to reduce pollution with the recognition that carbon emissions are simply a tinier part of the story than we've been told, not to mention plant food. From pure temperature data to precipitation, El Nino, cloud cover, hail nucleation, lightning triggering, jet stream dips, and the polar vortex events, there is now no mode, oscillation, circulation, or data point that has not been shown to be tied to solar energy in ways that are missed by CMIP5. The foundation of climate science has been allowed to change, and even though it won't become official until the 2022 report, you can learn a lot about it right now. The movie is called Climate Forcing. It's linked below this video in the box and also on our channel page and homepage of suspiciousobservers.org. This is what our university textbook is about. This is what the astrophysicists have identified for decades. This is our future. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.